Hi there guys, welcome back to the course. So at this point our jellyfish is practically finished. What we are going to do next is multiply it, but first we need to apply the materials to the hair. As you see it doesn't look amazing. So we need to adjust the properties of the hair to get an appropriate image. So first of all I want to let you know that in Cinema 4D, in this tab here, we have a series of presets. Objects, textures and ready-made things a kind of library of elements that you can use instead of having to make them yourself. If you go to Prime for instance, in Materials, Effects, you have this material here which looks quite ideal for the body of the jellyfish. So let's select it and apply it to the body. Let's take a look. From here you can open the Material Editor and adjust the properties like specular, diffuse, etc. to get different kinds of effects. We'll carry on working like this from the base of the material. Click here to go back to see our object and we're going to adjust the hair. What we can do for the hair is change the color. So maybe this purple color. Okay, choose another point, look for an emerald green and OK. Now with control selected, duplicate another point and add this point here. Okay, leave these activated. Activate the transparency and adjust the brightness. The thickness too, like before. Lower the end slightly and for the top, remember that by adjusting this value here, we get the thickness of the top part. This is all quite free though, so you can do this more or less as you like. I leave it like this. Activate the length as well. And for the distance, we can lower it to 12. Leave the variation at 100 and the amount at around 58. As you can see, I've also activated the scale and we can adjust all these values here too. See how it's coming along in the image here in the top left corner. Let's leave it like that and activate the render to see how it looks. I'll open the material editor and go to transparency. We'll adjust the transparency gradient and set it to white. We'll make the other one whiter too. Let's take a look. Go back inside to thickness and lower it to 1.6. We want to make it thinner. You just need to play around with the properties like I'm doing right now to try and get what you're looking for. Now you can drop down this menu and look for the hair, which was around here. You just have to understand that one thing is the hair, these tentacles that you see here, which we can also modify and another thing is this texture, which is what you see here. It's the small strands of hair that aren't the same as the tentacles. So these little hairs are different to the tentacles. If we activate the viewer, you can see that these little green bits is the material. Ok, we select green for the tentacles, but we could find something that we like better. 
As you see, there are different modules and depending on how you have Cinema 4D installed, you'll find one or another. Let's go into Prime, Materials, Glass and specifically the Bungie Glass works quite well, so we can add that to the library. I like how it looks, but I think we can work on it to make it even look better. Open the editor and change the color in Diffuse to a green color. Set the volume of the color to an emerald green. Leave the specular 1, number 2 also. In 3, change the color to an emerald green or blue. You can leave the transparency at 0. Set the reflection to 30 and the roughness, leave it as it is. Delete the excess material and take what we've done and place it inside the hair that's already edited. Render to see how it's looking. Now with Control, duplicate this material so we can work on top of it without worrying about ruining the other. Go to Diffuse and change the color slightly. Leave the volume as it is. Select a light green in Specular 1 and in Specular 3 give it a green color as well. Leave the transparent and the reflection as they are and change the roughness to a purplish tone. Go adjusting these properties and see how they look in the image on the left. It's a case of experimenting to find the effect you like. We could make it subtler by lowering the intensity. It's a question of taste. Let's apply the material to the tentacles. Go to Render to see how it looks. Select the material and duplicate it with Control. Now add it to the tentacles. Like this. At this point you can work on the material. You can use different colors, whatever you like. I'll do the same. In here, go to Guides and make the distance shorter. We want the tentacles to look a bit shorter. If you think there are too many of them, go back to here and lower the count to 20 for example. I think there were too many and you couldn't really see the shapes properly. As you know, if you go to forces, we have the wind associated. If you hit play, the tentacles move. This way the image looks much more believable. Go back to the material and go to Transparency. I'll move these values around here to get this kind of translucent effect. Do the same and play around with these settings. Go to Light and apply a Spotlight. 
Exit the camera and select the light so that we can rotate it. Around here so the light comes from the top and shines down. Now move it up and make the cone bigger. Go to the light properties and in visible light select volumetric. Adjust the angle of the cone and make it bigger. Make everything quite a lot bigger, the object needs to be in the light. Apply a light blue color. Go to the camera and let's see how the image will look in render. You can already see how the scene is more illuminated now with the spotlight. Go back into light and select this box here. No illumination. What this does is, it keeps the background, but the light doesn't affect the jellyfish. Exit the camera. Let's scale the slide to make sure everything is included inside. Increase the intensity to about 136. Select Shadow Maps. And now you see that the image changes quite a lot. Go into Camera and select Render. And we have more depth now than before. For the next step, exit the camera and create a disk. Make it bigger and move it to the top around here. Create a new material. Go into the editor and remove the color and the reflectance. Activate the Alpha and check the Luminance box as well. Both the Alpha and the Luminance should be activated. Inside the Alpha, go to Textures and look through the effects here. Apply a layer. Then in Shader, select Noise. Inside Noise, select Cranal. As you can see, this kind of simulates a water surface. Go to Octaves and set them to 2.5. Set the global scale. And down here, you can adjust the balance of black and white. Now go to Alpha and uncheck this box here. This way we'll see the effect of the Alpha in our image. Now go in again and adjust the black and white tone to get some more grey. Modify the octaves too, put them up slightly to 2.8. Now to achieve the animation of the texture, go to Animation Speed and leave this value like this. This way the texture becomes animated. As this texture will be joined, put 0.3 here. As it's joined to the light, the light will be animated too. Now we'll apply this material to the disk. What we've achieved are like small halos of light. Now take the disk and put it inside the light, just to tidy everything up a bit. 
Let's render to see how the image is coming along. Now click on these points here, especially the first one, to hide that disk in the editor. Open up the material we were looking on to generate some more powerful halos. Now go inside the shader, go to Effect and select Distort. Lower the strength to 8 and animate. Now you can go to Noise and select Cranial. On the noise scale, you can also increase this to 164, for instance. And here in the time scale, lower it to 50%. In Wrap, select Cycle. That's why it's important to work on the black and white contrast. So increase the white and make the black a little darker. That way the light will be more defined. In these values here below, you know that if you try them out, you get different effects. The idea is to find a combination where the white stands out, but there are still some areas of black and grey. Set the low clip to around 63 and the contrast to 30. The brightness to 19 and the high clip to around here. And leave it like that. Look at the difference now with this combination. If this were an animation and we hit play and exported the video, the halos of light would move depending on the material. The material that we've made has an animation, so those halos of light would also move if we made this composition a video. The next step will be to add a tag to the plane. Right click Cinema Tags. And we are going to apply a composition tag. Uncheck Screen My Camera and see how the disk is now hidden. Remember, add the composition tag and then uncheck Screen My Camera to hide the disk. Now besides all this, we'll also uncheck these boxes here. These three. We leave cast shadows to get the shadows of the light. The rest isn't necessary, that way we also give the computer less work. This is now taking shape. We have the light, the camera and the null object, so we are going to carry on working on the materials. Remember that in this tab, in the folders, there are lots of materials presets you can use. For example, in Prime, Materials, you can select a material that you like. We used one of those before. Now let's go for this blue one. Remember that here in the editor we had the views and the speculars. You can change the colors to add some variation. You can use Render Region to just render one particular area. This way you don't have to wait for the whole image to load if you just want to see one part. Now moving on with the materials. Here on the tentacles we have two types of duplicated hair. One that's edited and one that isn't. We can save both of them now. As we're going to duplicate the jellyfish, it's good that we have both. For example, if we multiply the jellyfish and put it further away, hide it. Go to the first jellyfish to the null. And obviously, as the position is determined, you can delete the hair that isn't edited yet. Now on the image, we see less of those hairs. 
as they are not duplicated anymore. It's a good idea to save those duplicates for more jellyfish we might do. But when we put them in place, we can adjust the hair. Let's leave it like that. Take the null, and now what we'll do is sort out what we want to be visible and what we don't. So for instance, we leave this, because we don't want it to be seen. Look for the body, activate it, and find all those hidden elements that we want to be visible. We'll hide this one here. We'll hide the lathe too. The displacer as well. And now our image is clean and we can carry on working. Now take the previous null object we created. Make it visible and place it in a different position. Scale it first and then move it. Exit the camera to see better. Put the camera and the light above the nulls. And let's go into this null or jellyfish. Let's start off by making the parts which are hidden visible and making the deformers like the displacer invisible, as well as the other properties we don't want to be seen. So over here, that's fine. We want this to be visible, the body as well. Go to the displacer and make it visible so we can adjust a few things, like the strength, so we can distinguish it from the previous jellyfish. Lower the box a little. Remember there are still two hairs here, one we don't want. Go to the other one, the one that's edited, and in guides modify the length of these tentacles. Again, to make a difference to the other jellyfish. Hit play and the shape has changed a little. These ones here don't move because we deleted the other hair. For this one we still have it. We'll delete the hair that isn't editable on this one, so we can work on the next jellyfish individually, if we want. Hit play and you see the tentacles are still moving. So remove this one here and keep the editable hair. Go to the camera. Fold the null. Actually, I'll exit the camera because I don't like the position of this jellyfish. Let's lower it. I want to try and hide this box that's coming out of the deformer. It's in the way right now, so we need to find it. And there we go. Duplicate the null and go back to the camera. Put this jellyfish a little further away. Around here. Rotate it. We want the tentacles and the whole body to be more visible. Now you can scale it. Take the other jellyfish and duplicate it. You can place this one more in the foreground. Make it bigger and so that it goes in front of the camera. Ok, so you can place your jellyfish wherever you want. Remember that you can't move the tentacles for the first jellyfish. 
but the other still has the editable hair tags. When you hit play, you can move the tentacles individually. So when all your jellyfish are placed in the scene, we can carry on. So we finished adjusting all the elements and placing them around the scene. What I did was select each jellyfish, for example this one 06. And here inside, looking through the effects, here it is. Inside tentacle and then subdivision surface, we have spline wrap. So in this case, I adjusted the offsets. And playing around with these values, I got different effects for each individual jellyfish. So they are all different. Remember that you can also modify the displacer. The idea is to add some variety to the scene. This one, as you can see, has more bent tentacles. Some are more open. You can change the distribution. You can place them wherever you like. For example, you could select a different color. You could open it and adjust some of the values. Even if just lightly, you get other types of colors or a variety of the material. So select this material and apply it to another jellyfish. Open render settings and in effect activate global illumination. Just check the box. In anti-aliasing select best. Although this will make the image take longer to generate, I'll set it to geometry as this is just a test. In outputs, adjust the size of the image here and here. So there we go. We'll generate our render and in the next and final lesson, I'll show you how to apply the color and make some adjustments in Photoshop.